Welcome to EPG Patshala. This is sixth module of C programming on arrays. There are many different types of data values that are declared as a constant in C. The constant value that cannot be changed during execution of program neither by programmer nor by computer. The constants in C are classified as primary constant and secondary constants. The primary constant in C used for storing single value or storing single character. The primary constants are integer, character, float and double. Whereas in secondary constant one can store different data type values. The secondary constants are arrays, pointers, structures, unions and enumeration. The array is one of the secondary constant. The array can be used to hold similar data type. Array nothing but a systematic organization of similar objects and these objects are stored in columns and rows. Let us take simple example of array. Suppose you want to hold 10 different values in C program. For that purpose you need 10 different variable names like variable 1, variable 2 up to variable 10 for storing 10 different values. If you want to use array in this program then you can use single variable name for storing 10 different values. In this module we will cover various aspects of array right from declaration to the simple example. Learning objectives of this module to know concept of array, to know types of arrays, to know their syntaxes and declaration, to know use of array and their examples. Overview of this module, introduction to array, types of C array, declaration of an array, initialization of array, two dimensional array, assessing array elements, sample programs and summary. There are many different types of data values that are declared as a constant in C. The value of constant that cannot be changed during execution of program. Generally constants are divided into two major categories like numeric constant and character constant. Numeric constants are integer constant and real constant whereas character constant are character constant and string constant. See, similarly same constants are classified as primary constant and secondary constant. Primary constants are the constant which consist of integer constant, real constant and character constant. Whereas secondary constant includes arrays, pointers, structures, union and enumeration. In this module we will highlight array which comes under category of secondary constant. Array is a systematic arrangement of similar objects usually in rows and columns. You can see in this picture different group of elements or objects are serially arranged. Let us go for another type of secondary constant that is structure. Structure is another user defined data type that allows to combine data atoms of different kinds or different data types are combined using structure like keeping student record or maintaining library information one can use structures. In this picture you can see different objects are kept in one image and this is the example of structure. Enumeration and enumeration is a special data type that enables for a variable to be set of predefined constant. In this image you can see different data types that are shown in the picture like different images are under one picture. Now what is an array? 
array is a collection of same type of elements which are sheltered under common name. Array can be visualized as a row in table whose each successive block can be thought of memory bytes containing one element. We have also seen different data types where array, pointer, structure and unions are seen. Array can be used for storing string that contains series of characters like storing name in memory. Array is also used for storing multiple strings like storing multiple names. Here we can see the example of an array with five different elements like element 1, element 2, element 3, element 4 and element 5. The number of requirement of bytes that each element occupies depends on type of array. If type of array is character, then array stores character element since each character occupies one byte. Array belongs to any of the data type. Array size must be constant value. Adjacent memory locations are used to store array elements in the memory. It is a best practice to initialize an array to zero or null. There are two different types of arrays. Number one, one dimensional array. Number two, multi-dimensional array. This is one dimensional array picture. In one dimensional array, the array elements are stored or entered in a row. Whereas in multidimensional array, the elements are entered or stored in terms of rows and columns. Let us see the syntax of one dimensional array. On the screen, you can see the syntax of one dimensional array, where you can see data type of array, name of array, and number of elements in array. Data type of array. It is the type of elements that an array stores. The type of array depends on data type of array. If array stores character elements, then type of array is character array. If array stores integer constant or integer element, then type of array is integer. Besides these native types, if type of element in array is structure objects, then type of array becomes structure. Name of array. This is the name of array given to the array. It can be any string, but it is usually suggested that some of standards should be followed while naming the array. At least name should be in context with what is being stored in array. Number of elements in array. Subscript indicates the number of elements the array stores. Example of array. You can see in this example, array name is A and number of elements are 10. So therefore, Declaration of array in this slide is integer a 10. It means there are 10 elements. Indexing of array elements done from 0 to 9. In this you can see array has 10 byte of space where the integer data can be initialized. Now you can see one of the simple program on one dimensional array. In this program you can see there are three elements are taken or initialized in array and these elements are displayed on the screen. You can see in this program header files are already included like standard input output dot h, con io dot h and main function. In this we are considering integer as i, integer array and where array elements are entered like 7, 8, 6. Then we are using for loop from 
i0 to 3 and we are incrementing counter by 1 and we are printing same value which are entered in array in before statement. So, here we are using printf statement percent d backslash t comma a i where i goes from 0 to 3. So, your maximum value will be 2. So, 0, 1 and 2. So, 3 values are printed or displayed on the screen of computer. So, in this example, uh, we can see how to declare array, how to enter elements in array and how to display values from the array. You can see second example, this program displays string using array. This is one more program which elaborates character handling using array. In this program, you can see difference between how to handle two different arrays, array 1 and array 2. These are the names of array. In array 1, we are just putting different characters like H, E, L, L, O and second array, we are putting a string like H, E, L, L, O that is hello and we are trying to display array 1 and array 2 on the screen. Now, using printf statement, you can display array 1 on the screen and second printf statement for array 2. If you use first printf statement that is printf array 1, you can display some string along with garbage value. You can see on the screen, we are displaying hello word with some garbage words or garbage values. In array 2, you get only hello world on the screen. Let us see example of array. In this example, we will try to display numbers in reverse order. If you want to display numbers in reverse order using array, you need some steps like you need to define size of array, you need to enter array elements and then you need to manipulate elements from the array. In this example, we will try to input size of array using printf statement. Then we will enter array elements using next printf statement and scanf statement. And for displaying order in reverse, we will use one more printf statement and that is shown on the screen. In this program, we will enter size of array from printf statement and scanf statement. The next printf and scanf statement are used for entering array elements and third for manipulation of array elements in reverse order. If you see output of this program, we are inputting size of array that is 5, then we are inputting array elements like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and in reverse order we want result like 50, 40, 30, 20 and 10. So, this is a simple example on array manipulation. Multidimensional array. This is syntax of multidimensional array which includes data type of array, name of array, row size and column size row size and column size. Row size in this square bracket, we declare the number of rows in array. Column size declares the numbers of columns in array. Here you can see example of two dimensional array with row size 2 and column size 5. Name of array is A and data type of array is integer where 2 indices rows and 5 is for column. You can see this table how the locations been created for multidimensional array. You can see array of 2 by 5 size. You can see there are 2 different rows and 5 different columns. Row 1, row 2, column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4, column 5. You can see A00, A00 means row is 0 and column is 0, whereas 
a14 means row is 1 and fourth column let us see one more simple example on initialization of array you can see in this example array name is a and size of array is 5 i value is 0 and we are changing value of i from 0 to size of a we are incrementing i by 1 you can see body of for loop where a i equal to i which will initialize different elements separately second initializing array at the time of declaration where you can declare a with no size and elements of array that are, that are entered like 1 2 3 4 and 5 here array size is 5 but we are not declaring size of array the size of array will automatically calculated in this case size of array is 5 third initializing array with string as we have seen in last module of handling of character that strings in C are nothing but series of characters followed by null character so the array containing a string means series of character so to store a string we need an array of character followed by null byte this makes the initialization of strings a bit different let us take a look since strings are nothing but series of characters so the array containing string will be containing characters in this example we are taking example of character array that is c h a r a in bracket you can see we are putting different characters like e p g and backslash 0 so here we are adding null character the null byte is required as a terminating byte fourth initializing array with string that is second method for example we are initializing array a with data type integer and string is epg here we neither require to explicitly wrap single quotes around each character nor write a null character the double quotes do the trick for us in the above declaration or initialization we have initialized array with a series of character followed by backslash 0 that is null byte array can be initialized at either compile time or run time after an array is declared it must be initialized otherwise it will contain garbage value or any random value in C programming array can be accessed or treated like variables in C for example scanf percent d ampersand age 2 use for insert value in third element of array age take second example percent d ampersand age i it means statement to insert value of i plus 1 element of array age printf percent d ampersand age 0 statement to print first element of an array this statement to print i plus 1th element of an array this way assessment of array elements done in C programming now this is one more simple program for assessing two dimensional array elements in this program you can see the header file that is included that is standard input output dot h integer main an array with five rows and two columns that are considered and we are inputting these array elements in the initial stage like integer a five rows two columns and these elements are entered like 0 0 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 we are also using different variables like i and j that are considered as a integer output each array element value we are considering i from 0 to 5 with increment of 1 output 
each element values we are also using j variable name from 0 to 2 we want to print these array elements on the screen of computer and therefore we are using printf statement printf a percent d percent d equal to percent d backslash n comma i comma j comma a i j it means we want to print value of first array element that is a 0 0 second a 0 1 a 1 0 a 1 1 a 2 0 a 2 1 a 3 0 a 3 1 a 4 0 a 4 1 these are the results you can see a 0 0 is 0 a 0 1 is 0 and a 4 1 is 4 now let us see how different arithmetic operations can be performed on array in this matrix format the arithmetic operation to be carried out on two different arrays where the matrix 1 array and matrix 2 array is being added together so you can see matrix a and matrix b is added in resultant matrix a is of 2 by 2 size matrix b is of 2 by 2 size and therefore your result is 2 by 2 in a array or a matrix you can see a11 means row 1 column 1 a12 means a matrix row 1 column 2 a22 means row 2 column 2 similarly b matrix b11 means b matrix row 1 column 1 b22 means b matrix row 2 column 2 and we are adding these elements and we are generating the result like a11 plus b11 a12 plus b12 a21 plus b21 and a22 plus b22 now arithmetic operations on two dimensional array array 1 is of 2 by 2 size and array 2 is of 2 by 2 size array 1 that is entered or declared as 1 2 3 4 array elements and array 2 4 5 and 2 4 you can see the result we learned earlier that how the values will be placed in matrices and how it will be added together you can see simple example 1 2 3 4 is first array and second array is 4 5 2 4 you can see one number is added with 4 and result is 5 similarly two number is added with 5 and result is 7 three number of first array and second number of second array that is added and result is 5 similarly 4 plus 4 8 3 plus 2 5 1 plus 4 5 and 2 plus 5 7 now multiplication the multiplication of multidimensional array is different from operation of addition and subtraction because the rules for addition and subtraction in array and rules for multiplication in matrices are different you can see there are two different matrices considered as x and y and resulting matrices or matrix is z your x matrix is a b c d that is 2 by 2 y matrix that is e f g h that is also 2 by 2 you can see how these multiplications are done a is row 1 column 1 of x b means row 1 column 2 c means row 2 column 1 d means row 2 column 2 multiplication that is the operator and second matrix that is e means row 1 column 1 F means row 1 column 2, G means row 2 column 1, H means row 2 column 2 that is for Y matrix. Now at the time of multiplication the first row of X array or matrix and first column of Y that is E will be multiplied then add to the first row second column of X array multiplied with first column 
second row of x array. The multiplication is not possible if the number of rows of one matrix are not equal to the number of column of another matrix. Let us see simple example of addition of two matrices. Here we are considering two matrices like M1 and M2 and resulting matrix is sum. First matrix that is M1 that is of 5 by 5 dimension. Second matrix that is also 5 by 5 dimension. It means there are 5 rows and 5 columns for M1 and M2. So, resulting matrix is also having same dimension. Let us see how to enter size of rows and columns for these matrices. And therefore, in this program, we are using printf and scanf statement for entering number of rows and columns percent t percent d comma ampersand a and ampersand b that is for scanf statement means a and b are the dimension of matrices suppose we are entering number of rows and number of columns like 2 2 then we are using next printf statement for entering array elements in m1 so we are using for statement for loop from 0 to A. So, your A is row and B is column. So, we are changing value of i from 0 to 5 with increment of 1. Similarly, J we are using for column and I we are using for rows. So, J goes from 0 to n. Similarly, we are using scanf statement that is percent D comma M1 in bracket i comma j. So, we are entering matrix element like 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, we want to enter matrix element for number 2 that is m2. Same case we are considering i from 0 to a. Similarly, same for loop from 0 to b. We are using scanf statement percent d comma ampersand m2 i j. Now, we want to add these two different matrices matrix m1 and matrix m2. So, we need some code for addition of these two matrices and therefore, you can see the code for addition of matrices. So, now we are entering elements of matrix 2 that is 2, 4, 6, 1. Now, you need to add these elements in resulting matrix. You can see i goes from 0 to a, j goes from 0 to n and we are using this important formula for addition of matrices. Sum i j equal to m 1 i j plus m 2 i j and this resulting matrix we will display on the screen using printf statement that is printf sum i j. So, this will display the resulting matrix on the screen. You can see entered matrix value like 1, 2, 3, 4, second matrix 2, 4, 6, 1 and resulting matrix that is 3, 6, 9, 5. In this you can see we are adding the element of first matrix with second matrix. That is 1 is added with 2, result is 3. 2 is added with 4, result is 6, 3 is added with 6, result is 9 and 4 is added with 1, result is 5. Let us summarize this module on array. This module includes various aspects like how to initialize, how to declare, what are the different types of array. You know array means collection of similar data types and here we have taken different examples on arrays. There are different initializations, different syntaxes used in this module. We also seen how to enter elements into the array, how to manipulate elements from the array, how to display elements on the screen using array. This module also highlight various other aspects of the array and structures.